on guys it's jack and today we're looking at gonzaga basketball ahead of the 2024-25 season and this is a team that returns the majority of their pieces from last year under head coach mark few who's now entering his 26th season as the head coach at gonzaga and coming off a good year 27 and 8 last season uh, 14 and 2 in the west coast conference maybe not a great finish usually you know i think it's like 22 years they've won the conference or maybe it was 19 somewhere around 20. um they didn't win the conference tournament this year going one and one losing to saint mary's going one and two in games against saint mary's this year uh, they went two and one in the ncaa tournament making it to the sweet 16 where they lost to purdue for the second time last year and well, I think it was another good season for Coach Few. Uh, I think in recent years, you know, the the year with Chet Holmgren, um, where they made it to the NCAA final, they were undefeated until they got there. There are a little bit higher expectations, I think, at the Gonzaga program. And while it was a decent year, I think they're looking for more this season. And with that being said, now's a good time to get into the roster overview and who's out, who's back, and who's new for Gonzaga basketball. So the only notable player who left the program was fifth year player Anton Watson. And I'll speak about it a little bit more later, but for right now, I just want to say that I think Anton Watson was a guy who came into the program pretty highly rated, I, I thought. There was a lot of talk about him, especially his freshman, sophomore years, as maybe a guy who could leave early for the NBA. And I felt like as his career went on, he just became a better and better player, just filled out, he just improved his game year after year. And, you know, the past couple of years, he became a, a really good defender, a guy who could even uh, step out and hit a three, not something he did on high volume, but he could do it. And he was a connector for this Gonzaga basketball team. So who's back? Like I mentioned at the start, a lot of guys are back. The majority of the team is back. So you've got Graham E.K., Nolan Hickman, Ryan Nemhard. You've got Brayton Huff, Ben Gregg, Dusty Stromer, and Steel Venters, who came in from Eastern Washington last year and unfortunately missed the entire season due to injury and now should be fully healthy and back for Gonzaga basketball. So technically he's back, but he did not play last year for Gonzaga. Who's new? Brayden Smith from Colgate. He's new. Khalif Battle, Michael Ajayi, and Ismaila Diagne, who's a center from Senegal, who's a freshman. I didn't notice on 24-7 Sports, but he is on their official team roster. And I think he'll probably um, not play very much at all, considering the, the center talent ahead of him, but one for the future. Similar with Brain Smith, it was announced he's going to be redshirting this year, which makes sense based off of the depth ahead on this Gonzaga team, and then he'll be ready to take over the reins most likely next year after Ryan Nemhard departs. And so the two guys that are new transfers that I expect to be part of the rotation, Khalif Battle and Michael Ajayi. Battle transferring over from Arkansas. He's bounced around a little bit of college basketball, but he is a surefire scorer who I think will contribute off the bench. And Ajayi, is a guy who had a good season last year, um, averaged around 15 points, close to nine rebounds, and was a you know a guy didn't shoot shoot great though, um, but as a guy you can see you know they brought him they invited him to the NBA Combine, so there's some potential with a guy like Ajayi, and those two guys I think are are basically brought in along with Steel Venters, and the depth of this team is better than it was last season. And speaking of that depth, I think the projected lineup for Gonzaga is going to be Nemhard, Nolan Hickman, Ben Gregg, and Graham E.K. And I said it like that intentionally because I think the fifth spot is a little bit up for grabs. That's the person who's effectively going to replace Anton Watson. Last year, yes, technically Ben Gregg didn't start the year as a starter, but I think he solidified himself. He was really good. Um, for them, I really liked his play. He did a lot of little things for Gonzaga, 
and I think he's just a winning player who deserves to start again this season. So I think the question for the last starting spot comes down to Michael Ajayi and Steel Venters. And I think they'll go with Ajayi because of what they're going to be missing from Anton Watson. And this is um, kind of what I was alluding to earlier in can they make up for the loss of Anton Watson with depth? Because while he was, you know, a connector and their best defender and a guy who could also, you know, play make a little bit, there isn't a guy on the team that can make up for what he's going they're gonna miss from him individually. But I do think between Ajayi, Venters, um, and Khalif Battle, they're deeper and therefore better. And so I think it will be Ajayi who who takes that starting spot, which means that they'll have Khalif Battle, Steel Venters, Braden Huff, and Dusty Stromer off the bench. And so, simply put, last year's team, I you know looking at the the numbers, the minutes played, right? Uh, they were seven deep. This year's team, I think, is going to be nine nine deep, and that is a big difference. That means that Coach Few can mix and match a lot more. Uh, you're less concerned about foul trouble and injuries, and it just provides a, a level of comfort to the team that they didn't quite have last year. And I think, you know, looking at this team, the other thing that I, I really like is that battle inventors provide more three-point shooting, which was an area that wasn't necessarily a strength last season, and they're going to be much better from there. Now, I, I love the combination of EK and Braden Huff. It kind of reminds me of, although their play styles are different, I think the impact is similar to the UConn team from two years ago with Adama Sonogo and Donovan Klingen as your one-two punch from center. Like you don't, you don't lose anything when the backup center comes in. It's a little bit different play style, um, but you don't lose anything in terms of production. And I think Brayden Huff is going to be even better this coming season. Ryan Nemhard. Is just a really reliable guard. Nolan Hickman's their scorer, and like I mentioned before, Ben Gregg is that you know that versatile piece uh, who just makes a lot of winning plays for them. And the only guy in the rotation I haven't touched on here is Dusty Stromer, who quite honestly was a player who I didn't I didn't love last season. So I'm interested to see if he can um, improve over the summer and just give a little bit more to the Gonzaga program this coming season. So, schedule and predictions. I think this is going to be this is going to be a better year for Gonzaga because of what I've been hammering on here. Like this is a deeper and better team, and they're non-conference games. Let's let's get into that. So, they've got Arizona State, who will come up to Spokane, and then they'll have neutral games in the battle for Atlantis against West Virginia either Indiana or Louisville, and then possibly Arizona among other teams, which would be fun um, considering the coach of Arizona is Tommy Lloyd, and that would be a fun matchup to have happen considering the fact he used to be an assistant coach, lead assistant coach under Mark Few at Gonzaga. Then they'll have a neutral site game, although neutral in name only, I think, um, where Kentucky will come to Seattle, and that should be a good game. And then similarly, but the opposite end of the spectrum, they'll play UConn at Madison Square Garden, which will be close to a home game, basically a home game, honestly, for UConn. And then I think a, a really cool matchup, and they're taking on UCLA in the Clippers' new arena. And so you've got six or seven good non-conference games. You know, there's some other non-conference games that they've got sprinkled in. And then I really enjoy the fact that the West Coast Conference, unlike some of these big conferences, hasn't expanded so much. And so the majority of the teams in the conference, you do get home and away games with, which I think is how college basketball really should be. At least, not maybe not every team, but the majority of the teams. And now the conferences are so big, you just don't see that very often. So home and away games for Gonzaga in conference play, St. Mary's. San Francisco, Santa Clara, Washington State, uh, LMU, Loyal Marymount there, Oregon State, Portland, and Pepperdine. And then they'll only play at home against San Diego and on the road against Pacific. So, with all that said, I've been kind of letting you guys know I think the direction I'm going with this team, I think they're better than last year. 
Um, I, Anton Watson does hurt, but I think they can make up for that loss with the depth, the three guys basically. Battle, Venters, and Ajayi. And so, I think, I was, I was honestly teetering between 17-1 and one and 16-2 and two in conference play. I ended up deciding on 16-2, and two, went, went a little bit more conservative, but I just think some of the teams that were good last year, like St. Mary's, um, aren't going to be quite as good this year. Washington State, I think, takes a step back. They lost their coach. I'm not sure how great the Oregon State program is right now. So you've got the two you know, Pac-12 programs joining the conference, but I don't think they're at their best moment right now. And so I think they'll be really strong in conference play. And the non-conference schedule, I, I think that game against UConn, I know UConn has a lot of turnover, but it's a de facto home game for them. It's going to be a tough one for them to win. And then I could see them losing one of the other tough non-conference games. So I have them at 10-2 and two in non-conference play, which gives them a total record for the regular season of 26-4. and four. I think this team is, is really good. Um, they, they, they just brought back so much of the team, similar to a team like Houston, except for while Anton Watson is really important, he's not quite as important as a guy like Jamal Shedd. Um, which is a video I just did and why it's like top of mind for me right now. And I just think that the the conference is not quite as strong, I think, mostly St. Mary's. And so I think that they're going to do better this season than they did last year. But I'm curious, guys, let me know in the comments below, how do you think Gonzaga is going to do? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.